In the last video, we created a layout with um, two buttons and one text view. And when we clicked on button one, we went to a method called method one. That's our on-click method. And for button two, when we clicked on it, we went to my method two. In our main activity.java file, we had created these two methods. Method one, that will be changing the text to say method um, button one clicked. We are changing the text size to 37. We changed the color to red and we made that view um, visible, that text view visible. When we clicked on method two, we um, said button two clicked. Um, we set the text size to 15 and we actually made that view as invisible. So let's run that um, application again and test it. So these are my two buttons. I clicked on button um, one, so button one clicked in red. And when we clicked on button two, we changed the properties, but one of the properties that we changed was making that button invisible. So to be able to access the text view in our, um, in our Java code, we needed to create that text view object or a reference to that object, and then we needed to initialize it. Now, you will notice that I'm initializing that text view only in the method one. I did not initialize it in method two. So we mapped the text view object, the Java object here in um, method one, but we did not do that. Now this will not cause me any problems if I started by clicking at button one. So let's actually restart this um, application and try to click on method two at first instead of uh, method one. So my application is running again. And instead of clicking on button one at first, I'm gonna start by clicking at button two um, before button one. So if we check button two, when we click on it, we will be executing method two, but we did not initialize um, our text view. So what will happen now, we are trying to um, access text view, but text view is not pointing to any actual object. We have a null pointer there. We are not accessing, um, or we are not mapping it to any actual view in our layout. So if we clicked on button two first, you'll notice that my application will crash. If we go to our log cat and see what's happening, let's go to the emulator we are using. And if we check here, we will see that we have a problem in mainactivity.java at line 31, which is actually setting the text for the text view TV. So why did this error happen? If we look at here, you will see that we are attempting to invoke this virtual method, which is textview.setText on a null object reference. Why is it a null object reference? Because the reference is not pointing to anything yet. We only created the reference and we did not point it to anything in method two. Now, if we clicked on button one first, which will invoke method one, that will point the TV object or TV reference to this um, actual object. So it will initialize it or point it to an actual object. So how do we fix that? One option is to actually initialize it again or point it to that object in method two. So if I copy this here and paste it and paste it in here, we will actually be initializing or pointing that object um, there. So if we run it now and we clicked on button two, we do not have an error. We just made it invisible. Button one made it visible. Button two is making it invisible. However, that's not something we want to do. Repeating the same code and repointing the text view or TV um, object to the same text view. So where can we initialize our text view um, variable? Where can we point that text view variable so both of these methods will have access to it without any error? In when we were using classes before, we used the constructor to initialize our object of that class. When we were using um, Java applications, Java desktop applications, we did that in our main method. So we will be initializing our objects in our main uh, method. So what is our life cycle here in an activity? Where do we start? What is our starting point in our activity? When we created our method, you will notice that one of the methods that were added automatically to your activity was a method called the onCreate method. And this is your starting point for the activity. Whenever you start an activity, whenever you start the activity, it will be created and that's the starting point for your activity, which is the onCreate uh, method. So where is this um, onCreate method coming from? Notice when you created your 
uh, main activity class, Java class, it's actually extending an app compact activity. So it's inheriting from this class. And this class, as any other class, will have some methods. And one of these methods is called the onCreate method. So we want to override that method to be able to do whatever we want once the activity is created. So once you launch the activity, the first method will be called is the onCreate method. If you do not override it, it will just call the method that is available in the app compact activity. So we want to override that method. So we'll have the same implementation, the same method header, which is the onCreate, the name of the method, it's void, and it's taking a parameter bundle saved instance state. So if you already saved the instance state of that activity before, you can use it in your um, application again. So the first step that we are going to do in our own create method is actually to perform the operations that were done in the original method. So we want to call that method in the original class, in the parent class. So we do that by using the keyword super and then calling the onCreate method that is available in the parent class. So that will do some initialization based on the saved instance state that we passed to that method when we created it. You do not need to worry about that for now, but know that we are just calling the original onCreate method before we do any changes or do any or add any other functionality to the onCreate uh, method. The second step is to actually set the content view where you tell this activity or tell Android which layout file to use to display on the screen when we launch that activity. So when we launch the main activity.java, this is our activity file, the Java file, we are calling the onCreate, and then we are telling Android which layout file to display on the screen. So set content view will take the layout, so R, remember R that we used for IDs, but instead of ID, we are passing a layout file, so dot layout, and then dot the name of the layout file that we are passing, which is activity underscore main. So that will set the view. This is the view that we are going to display. This is the layout file that we are going to display for the user when they launch that activity. So on the on create, we can initialize all our variables. One of the variables that we are going to initialize is actually the text view TV. So TV, now I'll make it equal to the find view by ID um, r.id.textView main. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and that will initialize the TV object. So now I do not need this in here and I do not need it in method two because it's already been initialized in the onCreate method. So before we actually are able to click on anything on the screen, we want to display the layout file to the screen. So that's why whenever we click on a method, the TV will be initialized before that because the onCreate method will be called before we even display the button to the screen. So we created our variable outside our method. So it's accessible from everywhere from all these methods, the onCreate, the method one and method two. And then we initialized that variable and we pointed it to the text view main um, view object in our XML file in the onCreate method. So now it's initialized and we are pointing it to an object. So if we run this now again, we'll see that when we click on button one, we do not have a problem. When we click on button two, we do not have a problem too. If we restart it and then start with button two instead of button one, we will also not have a problem because that text view was initialized when we created that activity and before we actually displayed these buttons to the screen. So it doesn't matter which button you click on now, it, the text view is already initialized and it's pointing to that text view object we have in the XML file. 